PSHP generó un hito en, es, en, este, en, esta, en esta persona. Bueno, ¿quién es Hitendra Patel? Él es el director del Centro de Innovación IXL. Y también es, hace miembro de, del equipo directivo del programa de innovación de, de la Escuela de Negocios Halt International Business School. Hitendra fue cofundador con Michael Porter del Grupo Monitor en la práctica de innovación. Y además trabajó eh, como manager senior de Arthur Deliro. Antes de su proceso como consultor, Hitendra trabajó para Motorola en el negocio de energía portátil, espacio de energía portátil, y es dueño, esta no la sabía, de seis patentes. Bien interesante. Bueno, también ha ayudado a fundar varias compañías en el área de emprendimiento. ¿sí? Ha publicado varios artículos en diferentes relacionados con tópicos de desarrollo económico en Brasil, en India, Indonesia, Singapur, el Reino Unido y Estados Unidos. Es coautor de varios libros, entre ellos eh, 101 innovaciones que cambian las reglas. El estado del arte de la innovación a nivel de las compañías en Singapur. Green Innovate, que es alrededor de la innovación verde. Y las compañías, cómo innovar para crear un mundo un poco más sostenible. Su último libro es Connectivate, con todo el tema de transformación digital que estamos viviendo y fue publicado en el 2012. Y eh, actualmente está trabajando en su quinto libro, que es alrededor de pensar y actuar diferente y hacer la innovación real. Y Tendra tiene un MBA de Kellogg eh, School of Management en, en Estados Unidos, el BSEA de la Universidad de Washington en San Luis, es PhD en Ciencias de Materiales, y e ingeniero de la Universidad Estatal de Iowa. Y Tendra, you are very welcome. Great, thank you, Carlos. Um, thank you, everybody. We've got to make that introduction shorter next time. Bueno, tenemos que hacerlo. It's very long. Es un poco más corto. Um, first, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Um, Estoy muy contento. I think Connect is doing a fantastic job of connecting people. Un gran trabajo conectando. And when you connect people together, then what you're able to do is make new more things. So one of the things I want to make sure everybody leaves this room with is. How do, you, how do you get more dots? Because people who have a lot more dots are able to connect the dots. And when you connect the dots, maybe you can make pictures out of it and imagine something different. Those who have more dots will be able to get better pictures. Those who have different dots are able to connect them in different ways to do something different than anybody else. Right, so one of the key messages that Connect is doing is it's giving you a mechanism to connect, but you also have to create more dots. Right? dots. My background, um, if you look at me, I look Indian. My grandfather y, left India nombre, uh, to go to Africa, to Zambia. Zambia India, so I'm Asian. Africa, yo because I was born in Zambia, I'm also African. Zambia, soy right? Because the British ruled Zambia, Como los because eh, British ruled Zambia, I'm also Zambia British, época, pues European. Soy I went to school in the United States. Fui a la I spent many years over there. Años y gasté muchos años all my education. Estudios. And I'm also American. Entonces, North American. American. And when I graduated with my MBA, MBA, I decided to take a backpack and headed down to South America and started a company in Brazil. And to a large extent, Brasil. fell in love with Mexico, Brazil, and other places. Brasil. And I'm also South American. Right, so the only question is, if I were to find a wife, where should I find the wife from? Colombia. <laughs> That's a good question, but the reality is my, my wife, uh, I should have got a wife from Australia. And then the whole world would, would be in my hand. Every continent is represented in my background. My wife's from Puerto Rico, so she's a Latina, so it's almost Colombian, but not really. Okay. Um, but the point I'm trying to make in this is because of that experience, I have dots. I have dots about Indian culture. I've got dots about African and African societies. I've got dots about the British and how they think about the laws and how they interact. I've got dots about Americans. I've got dots about Latin Americans. And when you have those dots, you're able to 
grab all of them and then we put them together, they're going to be different than the guy who has got dots only from the United States. They're going to be different than the dots from somebody just from Colombia. And so for every one of you, what I encourage you to do is to find more dots. Get more dots. You have to get more dots and you'll be much more able to do more things with what you are going to do. And connect does that. So with that, I want to thank Marcella. Thank you very much for getting me out here. I appreciate being here. Constanza has been a big force for us in Colombia for a long time, so I'm content. And thank you for having us here. Right. And then the other part of this dot says I teach in a business school. And I've got about a thousand students, of two thousand students I teach every single year. And those students leave to all kinds of places, locations. And they, Carlos was one of my students. That makes a dot. Please think of it like that. One of, one of my students work with me. And he's right here, his name is Ben Savolka. And he went on after working with us at IXL to become the Chief Innovation Officer of Guatemala, of the country of Guatemala. That's another dot. It's a dot for you guys to talk to him to say what they're doing. Right? And, and, and then there's, of course, many other people who we are helping things happen, with Herman and others. So thank you very much. I want to make sure, first of all, you guys turn around with somebody and talk to somebody you don't know. Introduce yourself to somebody you don't know. Let's get a new dot. Son muchas personas que los pueden conectar. Muy de wait. Puntitos, entonces háganlo por favor. <laughs> different. Somebody different. Exchange business cards. Exchange business cards. Find a way to meet for a coffee. Find a way to meet for a coffee to talk about something different. Okay, I'm going to take the meeting back to the stage, it's my, it's my stage. <laughs> okay, now let me explain what you just did. If you want to make innovation real, if you want to make innovation real, Today, innovation is getting harder and harder to do. And if you do not have partners, you do not have people who have other resources and knowledge, you are going to fail. So those who are able to connect with other people and use their knowledge and their resources, you can do a lot more things. So I'm going to keep to that main theme. How will you get more dots, whether it's ideas, or whether it's people, or whether it's assets, to get things done? You need more dots. And then, to win, you need to be able to connect the dots in a different way, different than other people, so they don't copy you, and they wow you, about the customer. Right. So just my background, um, I think Carlos gave a good in in input in there. I come out of management consulting, and management consulting has got a very strong philosophy. If you want to get something done, get the CEO on your side. If you got the CEO, and you got his attention, he'll give you money, he'll give you support, and whatever you want to implement, it will happen. That's how management consultants work, that's how McKinsey works, that's how BCG works, and they get the dinner with the CEO. And when we did this sort of work, whether it was at Samex, whether it was at Natura, whether it's a work at, at Tapsi or Coke, we found that we were able to move organizations into great innovations by putting pressure from the top and making sure everybody did what they did, and the allocation of resources were available, and the, the sponsorship was there, and things would happen. And then when the consultants left, guess what happened? The CEO started looking at other things, the attention went somewhere else, and everything slows down. The ability to keep on pushing goes away because the consultants work from the top down. 
So that support, when it goes away, the CEO starts to feel the initiative. So what we figured out was we think there might be a second piece to this puzzle to make innovation real. Let's go to the bottom also and do lots of teaching and training and education. If you've got a thousand people at the bottom who also understand how the CEOs are thinking, now we can push from the bottom and from the top. And when the CEO relaxes, the skies continue. So that was the idea. So we went to business school and we said, how do we take all this? this knowledge of consulting and convert it into teachable things. How do we make innovation from what was art into a management practice, into a discipline? If you teach a lot of people to do that, then we should be able to get out there. And so that's where how we've come together, where on one side we put the pressure from the top, which you guys need to do, and on the other side we put the pressure from the bottom. And, and we've got to do both of them simultaneously, because if you just do the bottom up, I'm sorry, there's not enough support from the CEO or the funding, resource allocation, everything else. If you just do it from the top, next week or next year, it's going to be 61. Following it might be quality. Another year it might be something else, and the CEO will move his attention to the next big thing. So how do you keep it sticky, and how do you make it last? Um, well, this is just basically, we've worked with many companies. One of our, our big, big attention for innovation is you've got to create the excitement to think about the future. You've got to see what the future looks like. Now, many of us look from the past to the future, and the, the, the Scott earlier on told you guys that really, if you look from the past, it's going to slow down. You've got to look into the future, and that's where, where the opportunities are. So you need to look at trends. And trends is the only way you guys are going to get a view of the future. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So let's go back with a simple Entonces, question for you guys. A la pregunta sencilla. Carlos earlier on already told you why companies need to innovate. Carlos he showed a whole bunch of companies for whatever reason empresas, were the greatest companies in the history of time. Kodak was fantastic Kodak and they were the world leaders in, in film cameras. En cámaras y películas. And they failed. Y fracasaron. They're gone. Ya no están. And people say they were stupid or they were dumb. Or they didn't see the trends going on in the world. That's how they explain it. Do you really believe the management of Kodak is dumb? These are the smartest people in the world. They were hired out of Motorola. They were hired out of one of some of the best companies to move this company from a chemical company to a digital company. But the problem is, one of the things that Carlos had said earlier on, we tend to stay focused on the car business. The car business was, at that time, film films that generated 80 to 90 percent of the profits. La utilidad. This new business called digital technology and cameras was generating one, two, three, four million dollars. Uno, dos, tres, millones de so where do you think all the big senior Entonces, executives que los will work? Where do they want to work? Let's translate percentage, percentage bonuses. Where do you think the big bonuses are? ¿Dónde están los bonos? And so all the management moves to the place where the money is, and the core businesses which generates all the cash, and that's where they stick to. So it's not that Kodak was not aware. The first 500 patents on digital technology was done by these guys. However, internally the organization is unwilling to move around. Because there's not a lot of reward in trying something new and trying something risky. Okay. If you go to my company, I used to work at Motorola. We had a similar problem. Our first customer was the US government. The US government basically says, make us a cell phone, a walkie-talkie for our soldiers to work anywhere in the world. So of course we can do that. And so guess what? Our soldiers work in Antarctica, and they also work in the middle of the desert. And if you're in a tank, and the phone is sitting on a tank, inside the tank, in a hot summer day, the phone has to work, 105 degrees centigrade. Like seriously? And then 5 degrees centigrade for the phone. Sí. And it should, be, it should work y también debe, where you're in the Arctic with the penguins Arctic, at minus 40. So we were great 40. engineers. And we said, of course we can make it. So we made the phone. Que, decimos, claro and inside the phone were all these really cool components and everything else. The phones are fantastic. If they won't break, component they won't do anything else. Rompe, no les pasa nada. Our phones... If you get into a fight with somebody and you throw it at them, si and you le, miss and hit the wall, si there'll be a hole in the wall. You go over, pick no the phone up, and say, hey, hole in the wall, phone's still working. Right? Similarly, if there's a fire, 
Si hay... After the fire, you go into the building, you see the phone, you pick it up, says, there's a fire, food still works. Uy, hay un incendio. Pero We sí, were so pero... proud of our engineering. Nosotros estábamos muy orgullosos de los ingenieros. Nokia comes along and realizes a simple idea. Nokia y dice, uy, say, tengo una idea más sencilla. Where do most of the people in the world live? ¿En dónde es que vive la mayoría de la gente en el mundo? And this is when it's very cold, they go inside. It's very hot, La gente dice, cuando hace mucho frío, so most people in the world live minus 10. Y la gente plus 45. cuando hace mucho calor también si entra en la casa, for la that gente vive a una temperatura not, not media de 22 grados centígrados genius in terms of requirements. fueron genios en términos de requerimientos y make the phone, phone and the phone y nosotros claro right? compramos and el teléfono we, we el phone, we creak, y squeak. el teléfono we drop the phone, it breaks we're like ah, look at this estos teléfonos se rompen son una baratija Nokia understood something pero Nokia había entendido algo we used to think it's our fault when the phone breaks nosotros nuestra culpa si el teléfono se rompía breaks it's our fault Nokia says se rompe es nuestra culpa. What do you guys do when you drop the phone? Whose fault is it? No quiere decir si se les rompe. You took the responsibility. They moved the responsibility to you. Les pasó la responsabilidad. The requirements changed, and that requirement from minus 10 to plus 40 was a simple change. Got Nokia phones to the world, and Motorola phones are too expensive. Los Motorola son demasiado caros. Bye bye Motorola. Y de pronto chao Motorola. And we're seeing the same thing with the story on RIM. Lo mismo pasó Again, con not being able to understand the changing customer requirements. Necesidades de el And we see changes with Blockbuster, with Google too. Con Who knows con how long Google is going to last? It's hard to believe. When we were at Motorola, I want to make sure if any of you are working Motorola. for the greatest company in the world, and we were there in the 80s, Nosotros 90s, Motorola, we had a meeting one day, they called us all in, the top 100 technologists. A los 100 técnicos más As we walk in, they give us sunglasses. Y entraron, nos dijeron, mire, Raven. Con Motorola. Beautiful sunglasses. We walk in. The CEO standing on the stage. He says, "Guys, muchachos, we just hit the 40 billion dollars of cell phones. Acabamos de de vender 40 millones de dólares." We believe the market is of one billion. We are going to become the first trillion dollar company. Vamos a volver en la primera empresa de un trillón de dólares. Todos vamos a estas gafas. El futuro es prometedor. Nos pusimos las gafas. And we felt good. Y nos sentimos bien. But guess what that created? Pero imagínense que creó eso. Arrogance. Mm. Arrogance, Arrogance and yeah, yeah, lack of humility. Falta de humildad. And when that comes up, humildad. now our suppliers are coming to us and say, you guys are so good. Y hoy en día, and we are. We go to the market and say, you guys are so good. And we say, we are. Your mother tells you you're so good. We say, I am. The same thing. You start believing that, that stuff and you stop listening. Y empieza, so y one of the things about innovation is you have to listen. Lo que tiene que ver la innovación es que hay que escuchar, hay que escuchar a los clientes, hay que escuchar a los proveedores, hay que escuchar a todo el mundo. But arrogance gets in the way. Y la arrogancia es el momento. So those of you who are very successful right now, your danger is arrogance. Es el momento, su peligro es el arrogancia. It will happen. Because people will say, oh, you work for this great company. La gente le está diciendo, uy, es que, ah, se trabaja para esta empresa, uy, tan bueno. Y uno se siente bien. And then those other companies which are not out there, which are flat, you have to move quickly. Because the world will change faster than you can. Because the world will change faster than you can. Because the world will change faster than you can. Because the world will change faster than you can. Because the world will change faster than you can. Because the world will Let me just talk about how to make innovation real. Um, one of the first things that you guys have to examine, I'm just going to go out there, is it's, it's hard. It's what, what Dr. Eggert said earlier on. It's very, very hard. Innovation is fun. It's, really, it's, really, it's creative. It's a lot of fun. But when you actually try and do it, And I'm talking about not the talk, not the concept, not the idea. You try and do it. Everything you know is wrong. You got to figure out new ways to do new things. So what's the easiest thing for you to do? Stop doing it and go back and do the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go back to the old thing. We tend to go
If you tell your company where to innovate and as a company it's decided, then you need to know how to innovate. Do you know how? Do you know how to, you know how to generate ideas? Okay, that's easy. Do you know how to take that idea and make teams out of it? Okay, that might be easy. You know, you know how to make sure the teams are the right sort of people. Do you get the money at the right time? Are you allowed to make a partnership at the right time? Who makes those decisions? So there's a whole bunch of how part which is missing in innovation. And therefore, if, even if you know where and you don't have this, you won't innovate. If you know where, you know how. That's the hardest part now. Is the discipline. How many of you guys have really tried to innovate? Really do something? Is it easy? It's fácil. No, it's mistakes after mistakes, experiments after experiments, no, hay que and a thousand people mucho. telling you, y es que you'll fail. A mil que right? va a so the easiest thing for you to do is stop doing más fácil it. De hacer es dejar de hacerlo. And therefore, this is the one where it gets difficult. Este and how do you get disciplined to finish what you start? Tener la disciplina de terminar lo que uno empezó. And the way you do it, of course, is la manera de hacerlo es claro, what was mentioned: leadership and culture. From the top, the leaders have to make sure they're interested, they're excited, they review regularly. Que ser and on the bottom of the side, there are people and who are able to do these things because they've got time, space, and other things. Tiempo, espacio, I want to talk about these three things in more detail. Quiero hablar and de tres, tres cosas where I'll deviate. From the previous talk a little bit is I'm going to focus much more on breakthrough innovation. How do you create breakthrough business growth? And how do you make sure you can execute on that? That's, that's where, where, where it comes from. Um, I'm, going to, I'm not going to talk as much about existing products to market. I'm not going to talk a lot about um, um, the incremental. I'm talking about the breakthrough. Okay. So with every framework which comes along, this looks very messy, but it's a framework. The thing which sits on the outside is your strategy. You need an innovation strategy of where to innovate, where to innovate. Then you need to know how to innovate, the capacity. And inside the where, there's some, uh, how, there's some specific details. I'm going to talk about each one of them one at a time. And then there's the thing about the discipline, the culture, the leadership, and the culture to lead. Breakthrough innovation is harder than other types of innovation for one reason. The market is uncertain. The technology is uncertain. The business model is uncertain. The channels you go to market is uncertain. And it's got much more complexity in terms of how many uncertainties there are. And therefore, the process which is described earlier on, same process to a large extent, you've got to be much more careful about the steps on the process, the fuzziness of your gates and the fuzziness, the fuzziness of your decision making. Las etapas. All right, so let me go with first the definition. Entonces, so I'm going to talk about going around first strategy. How do you develop innovation strategy for your company? And therefore your company will continue to innovate. Go, I'm, and I'm going to try and get into the how part a little bit. Not so much on the what part. Give us a chance to think about it. Para que ustedes on lo side, piensen. All right, so let's go with the first on the top on the innovation, innovation strategy. The, the three questions you got to ask: What's your definition of innovation? Why should you innovate? And where should you innovate? The what part is important. If I come to you guys right now and ask in your company, what's your definition of innovation? Guess what happens? Some of you will say it's R&D. Some of you will say it's something about the market. Some people will say it's about ideas or whatever. But if you don't have one definition for it, what you're going to have is a problem in terms of executing anything after that. You need an actionable definition for innovation. So here's what we have seen. We went and researched probably about hundreds, hundreds of companies in terms of innovations that they do. And I want to use the word innovation. And we asked them, what is an innovation? And they basically said, guys, stop using the word innovation. Put business in front of it. And it will become very clear to you. From now on, when you talk about innovation, say business innovation. Now, what does that mean, business innovation? That every activity you do for your company must do what? Create value, right? So very quickly, business innovation is all about the value it generates. So put the word business in front of it. From now on, if you're going to do innovation, it's better to create value. We don't want just ideas. We don't want just projects. We want ideas and projects. Commercialized. So link the word value Entonces, on, the, on the end of empresarial it. Al final. The second thing we said was, segundo que les dijimos es, mire, if you're going to innovate, what's si the definition of that? And in the US, 
en los Estados Unidos. En Northern Europe, there's a little bit of a, almost a arrogance in this positioning that if it's not new to the world, si no es nuevo para el mundo, it's not innovation. No es innovación. New to the world. Nuevo right? para el mundo. Now I'm going to go to the other extreme. China. Does China, China, China innovate? China innova. Or do they copy? O ellos copian. Do they make money from it? Ellos hacen dinero, Let's go back now, okay? Sí, empecemos desde el principio. Is this something new for them? Esto es algo nuevo para It's ellos. new for them es nuevo para and it ellos. creates new value for them. Y crea, crea nuevo valor para ellos. Make sense? ¿Tiene sentido? I think they're innovating tremendously across things that we don't even understand. Cosas que no we entendemos. want to call them copycats. Nosotros queremos llamar copiadores. We want to make them look like they're not so clever or anything else. Guess what? No Who's making the money today? They are. Está so in ellos. this definition, I want you to embrace no, one thing. What it was new for you, not new to the world. No nuevo para el mundo. What it was new for your company, para su empresa. not new for your competitors. No nuevo para sus competidores. What it was new for your company, que nuevo para su empresa. should be considered as part of your Debería portfolio of innovation. Right? So it's new. Lo nuevo. And then the last part of the question is, where does the innovation happen? ¿Dónde sucede la innovación? And we know today, innovation is happening everywhere. It's happening in R&D. It's happening in marketing. It's happening in businesses. En empresas. And so we know innovation cannot be just in R&D and technology. It can't just be about the product. You just change the channel. No puede cambiar el canal. Just the channel. Solo el canal. Completely transform your business. Y transformar el negocio completamente. Would you call that innovation? Ustedes llamarían eso innovación? When McDonald's basically McDonald's basically puts their McDonald's at a gas station. Or in McDonald's in a did they change the hamburger? Ellos están cambiando la hamburguesa. Did they change the food, the business pricing model, anything else? Did they change the ingredients? Los ingredientes. All they did was change the location. Lo único cambiaron fue la ubicación. Did that make money for them? Y eso les hizo dinero. A lot. Mucho. That's an innovation on, on basically channels. En canales. So now, when you look across the opportunity set of where ideas are for, for innovating, you can see there's ideas in production, ideas in offering, ideas in delivery, ideas in markets. En mercados, en entrega. But The best ideas are the ones which cut across. Las mejores ideas son las que cruzan de una. Those are the better ideas. So what happens in your organization es que is somewhere along the way somebody says we need to become more efficient. Dijo, no, tenemos que ser más And they create a thing called an org structure. Are you familiar with that? La estructura. Marketing, de mercadeo, HR, manufacturing, humanos, sales. Those are org charts. Ventas, un organigrama clásico. That org chart. First says, Ese we know who works where and who's the boss and how decisions are done. Trabajado, donde, quien, el jefe, quien and it creates efficiency. Y efficiency. That efficiency creates a problem for innovation. Es un para la innovación. Because the best ideas are going to be across the whole value chain of your company. But this person can't talk to this person who's working in, 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 in product development. This person can't easily talk to the guys in channels. The guys in marketing can't talk to this guy. But you need the dots from this person to maybe use this person or this person How do you get the dots from the other people? The org structure works against you. We call those silos. Okay, so you got to break the silos somehow. So the definition of innovation is basically if we do anything new across any of these things from the pricing model to the networks, we can do something amazing. Que cruce cada una de esas partes, pero the más bigger idea, idea is the one which connects dots across the whole thing. So let me tell you a story of enterprise. Are you familiar with enterprise, the car rental company? Conoce la empresa Enterprise. When you think of car rental, who's the number one or number two car rental company? Carros. ¿Quién es el, el alquiler de carros número uno del mundo? Hertz, Avis. Hertz, Avis, yeah. ellos. So Avis and Hertz does this. They look at people like me. They think we're the best customers for them. I travel, I travel a lot. And I'll book a ticket with American Express or somebody. American Express will say, oh, where are you flying? You'll say, I'm going over there. And I say, oh, by the way, would you like a hotel room there? And I say, sure. And I say, would you like a car? Y dice, me quiero and the car will be probably in Avis and Hertz. So there's a marriage between the travel agencies entre las agencias de viaje and the car rental companies. Y las, eh, los That's de a very strong relationship. Es una muy buena relación. Once I book my ticket, the guy would say, there's a car available for Avis or Hertz, that's $100. El carro cuesta $100. And I said, that's fine. Sorry about that. Okay, $100. And then I'll rent the car because I work for, for a company pues and I'll be expensive. $100 is fine. Les cobro a ellos el carro. I get on the airplane, I land at the airport, Voy en el I get out of the airplane, out of the airplane walk down the hallway, and there's an escalator which goes down. And right at the bottom, my baggage claim is 
are Avis and Hertz. La parte donde reclaman los is that expensive real estate? Avis y Hertz. Eso es It's very expensive. Bienes raíces caros. And then caros, yes. further out you got the other ones, quality, budget, and all the way out like Cheapo and don't rent for us type of companies. No right? <laughs> really bad ones. You go to the to the Avis and you say hello. I'm Mr. Patel. It's fun, fantastic. The bus outside. Get in the bus. Bus takes you to the car into a parking lot. Is the parking lot expensive? Alguien te lleva al parqueo y el par es tener un parqueo es costoso. And you rent a car usually on a Monday evening. You know, por lo general. You turn it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's the business model of of the city. Enterprises go to do get into this business. Quería entrar a este. And in order for them to do this, they would have probably to do the same thing. Now, what happens when you copy somebody? Pero qué pasa si uno copia a alguien? When you do the same thing, you will need to have a rental place, a relationship with a phone, uh, with a travel agent. You'll have to have a parking lot at the airport. What happens when you play somebody else's game? Do you come first? This is why the United States has got the world's baseball series, world champions. Why nobody else plays it to a large extent? Right? When you play somebody else's game, you lose. When a French movie. Enters the Oscars in Hollywood. Oscars, what chances does it have to win? ¿Qué chances tiene ganar? Pretty close to zero. Casi Who made the rules? Hollywood. Reglas, Hollywood. If you make a French bottle of wine, si uno, a wine competition, and you take a California wine, bring it to France. Who's vinos going to win? California, France, quién gana? There's no way a, a California wine will win there because no the rules were made by those guys. So enterprises, let's change the rules. Entonces, enterprise, lo que hizo fue cambiar las reglas. Let's change the rules. Let's use different dots. Utilicemos otros punticos. Different dots. So here, let me ask you guys just to innovate. Where do you think are the opportunities for enterprise if you were to start a rental company and not compete with the business? First, look at different customers. ¿Qué harían? Busquen distintos clientes, ¿no? What other customers are there? ¿Qué otros clientes hay? Every day, tourists maybe, Turistas, students perhaps, estudiantes. There are about a thousand garages in Bogota right now. And in those garages, there are about ten cars getting fixed. Do you think those ten cars, the owners of those ten, those cars, do you think they need a car? Perfect. So there's a big market of about a thousand to ten thousand people who want a car in Bogota today. Make sense? Okay, if you want to access those customers, how do you access them? llegarle a esos clientes, ¿cómo les llega a sus clientes? Beautiful, insurance company. So here you are, here you are driving your car, you get in an accident, the first thing you do is call. Who do you call? Es que a la aseguradora, ¿no? Insurance company, why? ¿Por qué a la aseguradora? Because you want to make sure you don't pay for it. ¿Por qué uno se quiere asegurar? That's the real, real reason for it, right? So you don't want to pay for it. Porque uno no quiere pagar, quiere que el seguro lo pague. And you say, hello, I was I was parked in my car. Not driving, I was parked in my car and somebody came and hit me. Right? Alguien llegó y me pegó. Whatever you say. <laughs> somebody crashed into me. This this pole came over and hit me. All right. Oh, se me cayó un árbol encima. I wasn't even there. Yo ni siquiera estaba ahí. So you, you you talk to the insurance company, and the insurance company says, "Hey, guess what? I know you have a car accident, Yo sé que usted tuvo un but in your insurance policy, pero en su policía, we have an agreement with another car company to rent your cars for thirty days for twenty dollars. Would you like that? What's your answer? 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 Te and somebody says, hello, Mr. Patel. Uh, alguien like, te dice, hola, wow, Mr. Patel. Y dice, uy, ya me, me conoce esta persona, uy. That's IT technology, right? Es Information moved over to the person. They know who I am. Uh, and so they don't even ask me for my driver's si license. They say, Mr. Patel, mi licencia de understand you were in a car accident. Patel, Tell me what happened. Estoy en una, me, me what do you say? Un I, was, ¿Qué pasó? I was parked in my car and somebody came and hit me. me you say that thing at least 20 more times before the week is over. Right? And the person says, "I'm sorry to hear that." La persona dice, "Bueno, lo siento mucho. Car le va a mandar un carro a usted." They don't have a parking lot to Ellos bring the no car tienen, to you. Y no hay que ir a so you're like, "Wow, this is great, car right?" Y dices, esto está muy bueno. Car comes to you. Viene el carro. Guy comes out of the car. Usually, it's a young Alguien sale person. Del carro, pero jump out and says, "Mr. Patel, here's your señor car. Patel, aquí está Just the keys. Aquí las What happened to you? ¿Qué le pasó a uno? What happened to you? They ask again." And you're like, ah, le pregunto, ¿qué le somebody pasó? likes me, somebody ah, cares about me. And you talk mío, about how you were driving your car, and you were doing nothing at all, and this idiot, idiot came along and hit you. How do you feel? How do you feel about all this right now? You're feeling great about this, guys, aren't you? This is a great company. So now you take the car, you go home, and you call the garage and say, hey, is my car ready? When can I can be ready? The garage says always, what's his regular days? How many days? Four days, five days will be ready. Four days go by. You call them up again. 
And they say, what do they normally say when you call them four days later? Ah, uh, we got busy with other no, things, we'll take another four days. Otros días. Now, if you don't have a car, what will you do? Y si no carro, uno, ¿qué hace? Really angry. Uno se pone muy You'll bravo. yell, perhaps. Uno grita. Right? So in this case, you basically say, no problem, I got a car. Pero en este caso, dice, no, four days. No importa, tengo, Eight days tengo go by. Carro, the phone up, you call the guy again. Where's my, my car? Y so, oh, we car. ordered some parts. They ah, from Sweden for parts, some reason. Take another four days. Faltan otros cuatro días. The average length of time the cars are rented about 15 days. El promedio de que estos carros están alquilados. The car rental cost is twenty dollars. Y el alquiler cuesta veinte. And they're able to generate enough revenue to pay for that car in less than a hundred days. Very good. Ingreso para pagar. The business model is quite solid. El modelo de negocio es bastante solo. Okay. Finally, you return the car. Finalmente uno devuelve el carro. Now the question is. Y la pregunta es. How did they collect the payment? ¿Cómo obtienen el pago? Collect the payment. ¿Cómo cómo Recolecta su Nothing. Enterprise. Insurance company. One bill. Una sola cuenta. Enterprise and the insurance company Enterprise basically says you had 10, 100 customers who used 30 days. One bill and the money goes back. Un cheque y listo. Is that beautiful? Bello o no? What do they, what's the offering they give to the world? A ¿Qué car. oferta que le dan al mundo? Un carro. It's just a rental car. That's Un what Avis does and that's what Hertz does. Que hace Hertz y Avis. Just a car. And what Enterprise did was they changed everything. They changed how you got the car. They changed how they deliver the car. They changed how they price it. They changed how they distribute it. Guess who's the world's biggest car rental company? Imagínese quién es hoy la empresa más grande del mundo en alquiler de carros. Come on, guys. Adivine. Enterprise. Enterprise. And the point over here is what they did was they changed production, they changed the offering, the service and the experiences, they delivered the car to you, they changed the market completely, they changed the pricing model and the business, how they interacted with you and said no, change, no money from you, only from the insurance company, and they created partners everywhere. A lot of these rental car companies for enterprise are in the garages. Están en con los, trabajan con los mecánicos ahora. But at the end, all they did was still rent the car. Siguen siendo so what I want to make sure you guys carro. think about innovation is Entonces, cuando en it's innovación, happening everywhere es que connected across the whole thing y se conecta con todo. any questions? ¿Alguna pregunta? take the story with you ask yourself in your company what are you doing around innovation on this thing here están haciendo para innovar so así? now let me organize your thinking four questions you guys need to make your ideas actionable tiene que ser and executable ejecutable. A lot of ideas are not actionable or executable. No when you generate your ideas, you eureka. Idea, es una it's de beautiful. Es bello el you just don't know how to get started. Pero uno no sabe you just cómo don't empezar. know how to actually make it happen. Uno no sabe cómo so realidad. what we do is we ask four questions on the idea. Just four questions. Sobre la idea. Solo cuatro preguntas. What trends are these ideas based on? Sobre qué tendencias estas basadas estas What's ideas? Trends? ¿Qué tendencias? What is the human need it serves? ¿Cuál es la necesidad that somebody who has a need will pay money for it. Tiene una necesidad y va a pagar dinero por satisfacerlo. And if they do pay money for it, si how will you collect the money? Ella, ¿cómo vas a recolectar? What's your business model ¿Cómo, for making ¿cómo vas a collecting the money from the person who just delivered something para, to them to this offer? Cuando entregues el producto, ¿cómo te van a pagar? And if you do do it and you have that figured out, how do you make sure people can copy? ¿Cómo te vas a asegurar de que nadie te copie? How do you make sure in your design of the idea up front others can copy? Asegurar de que al diseñar la idea nadie te copie. Is it copy you? Guess what? Who wins? ¿Quién gana? the customer because cliente, everybody will get the price down todos van a bajar four simple tres, questions cuatro preguntas sencillas. so this question is very important because when you look at innovation as a pipeline whatever you start when it comes out a la has como to be relevant in the future it's going to take time to start and to get it out so you need to be final. able to see the future when it launches desde el inicio. Some products take three weeks to launch, but semanas, many take two to three, four years to launch. Dos, tres, años. An iPhone, how long do you think it was in the pipeline? When did they think about it? And when did they actually launch it? It was about two years. Como dos años. So two years is making its way through the pipeline. And two years before, they had to imagine what the customer of the future looks like. They had to imagine what technology will be there. And as it makes its way through, Out comes the phone and it's relevant for the future. How many of you guys can see the future? Relevante. ¿Cuántos de ustedes pueden ver el futuro? Somebody, anybody know? All right. We don't have a, a, a crystal ball to see the future. Una bola de cristal para ver el futuro. So the best thing that we have to see the future is called trends. Lo mejor que podemos hacer para ver el futuro es mirar los trends. And the trends happening in the world right now, whether it's robotics. 
Whether it's um, the shifting populations of, of in the U.S. of Hispanics as a culture transforms. It's the baby boomers, the people about my age and 20 years older who are about to retire and going to spend all that money that we saved up for us. You know how many that is? 60 million people? And each one of us has saved up on average about $500,000. That money will be spent. Vacations in Mexico. 60 million people and $500,000. It's a lot of money. It's a trend. It's going to happen. You can generate ideas out of that. There are ideas being generated right now around biohealth and technology and science um, where they're beginning to do micro-examination of the cells. The trends of green the trends of connectivity, the trends of the bottom of the pyramid. Those trends are basically are real. It's like a tsunami. You want to not say, I don't see it, I don't see it, and then you go, bam, it hits you. What you want to do is get on the surfboard and surf the tsunami as the tsunami starts. Trends are what you want to prepare for. You guys get that? In Japan, in Japan, the average population Japón, is getting old. The, the women in Japan are married, getting married later. And usually they don't have kids. So today, most young people about 35, 40 years of age have got two parents on top of them. They're about 60 years old. And the Japanese live a long time. They have the highest life expectancy. So on top of these two parents, two more grandparents. And so it's, a, it's like this. And this person has to show love to all of them. To show affection, attention, whatever. And they, it's one of the worst countries for immigration. If you go over there, it's very hard to be part of the community. You have to be Japanese. So in the future, what are your ideas for that? Simple, right? If you're Honda or Toyota, what should be your ideas be? Honda or Toyota, ¿qué ideas tendría? Make more cars? Es hacer más carros? That the population is going to die. Pero la población se les va a morir. Population is going to decline to about 90 million. La población va a bajar como 90 millones. What should Honda and Toyota do? ¿Qué debería hacer Honda? Trends, robotics. La tendencia son los robots. Trends, healthcare. La tendencia es la cuidado de salud. Let's think about robots to help people get out of bed. Robots to clean your house. Robots to make the medicine to your parents. Robots which look like humans. While Germany and the U.S. has been, has been paying attention to robots which are for the factory floor, for factories, to make the factories more efficient. Japan's focusing on the humanoid, human robot. How did you pay for the robot? It's your parents. A thousand dollars? Just struggling to get out of bed. Ten thousand dollars? One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. Ten thousand dollars. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. One robot for every family. Big opportunity. One in every house. Las ganas de dar dinero por esa satisfacción. So, tell me something about needs. You guys have all been told about this very complicated language, unmet needs and this and that. Tell me about needs. What's the basic need? Sobre necesidades. ¿Qué es una necesidad básica? So, let me help you start. Let's start with something that you will die. What do you need first before you die? Que uno se va a morir, pero uno que necesita antes de morirse. Air. Aire. Right. In three minutes you will die. Sin aire en tres minutos. Do you think you can make money from oxygen? Uno obtiene dinero de los chinos. Gratis, pero. Go to China. Vayan a China. Just saying face masks. La gente usa the, máscaras. They're putting things in, the, in buildings to clean the air out. Y tienen filtros de aire. It's a tri it's going to be a billion to more than a billion dollar industry. What's the next thing that you really become cranky, angry, or you feel like dying? Que uno si uno no tiene. What is four days? So something worse happens in less than four days. Cuatro días. ¿Qué pasa si no si uno no come? Sleep. Ah no, sueño. Sleep. How big do you think the sleep industry is? How many beds in the world? How many mattresses? How many hotel rooms? Huge! And we pay money for those things. A lot of money. What's next? Food? No water? How big is the water industry? Coca-Cola, Pepsi, beer companies, tea, coffee. What's the next need? Food. Bungie, ADM, Cargill, McDonald's. McDonald's. All the all the cereal companies. What comes after that? Sorry. 
Transport. We need mobility. We need to move, right? Transport. So first is our feet, then is sapatos, the shoes, eventually is bicycles, cars, aeroplanes, huge industry. Gran industria. And then we talk about style and fashion. Y luego la moda. How we look. We want to look different than others. Queremos vernos distinto a los otros. And there's money to be made there. The safety and security. Locks on the doors. Protection. Clothes are protection. First level is protection. La ropa es protección. Protection for the weather. Protección del medio ambiente. Keep the good in. Keep the bad out. Lo bueno adentro, lo malo afuera. You guys, I just want to make sure when you think of innovation, keep it simple on needs. If you have a pet, how many of you have a pet? ¿Cuántos de ustedes tienen una mascota? Dogs, cats, yeah. Gato, perro. Let's, bad scenario. Let's say your pet is sick. Imaginémonos que su mascota está enferma y lo llevan al veterinario. And the vet says, y el veterinario dice, problem. hay un problema. There's something growing inside. Algo le está creciendo en el mundo y tenemos que abrirlo y sacárselo. It's going to cost about $2,000, $3,000. Y va a costar como dos, tres mil dólares. Who has the need? ¿Quién tiene la necesidad? The dog, la mascota, the vet, el veterinario, the owner, el dueño. The, who's gonna pay? ¿Quién va a pagar? There you go. Simple. Ahí Life está. simplifies when you just Todo say who's gonna pay. Cuando uno piensa en quién. And then when you ask why do you pay? Y luego piensa why do you think they pay? Va a pagar. ¿Por qué piensan que esa persona va a pagar? So we ask why, 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 and you'll come down finally because I love my dog. That was the need. Need is love. Need is love. It's very important. And now you say you're a veterinarian and you say the dog is very sick. Do you love your dog? You don't say dog is sick, dog will feel better if you do a surgery. El perro the need must be connected to the message. No, hay que conectar la right? necesidad. So there's, there's a, there's a thing inside there. And therefore, when you understand the need with your offering, then you might be able to extract the value that you deliver for what they think is fair. How many business models do you have in the world? All right, so let's just go simply. If you go to China and this was on sale in a market, how would you buy it in China, in the market or in Egypt? You, you go in and say, one dollar. What do they say? Ten dollars. Okay, no, no, two dollars. They say, oh, you're killing me. Seven dollars. And you go back and forth for a long time. That's called bartering. And then somebody else comes and they say, oh, I buy it for three dollars, let's say. Somebody else might buy, pay five dollars, somebody else might pay one dollar. It doesn't matter what they pay, as long as it costs less than what they pay, you collect all the money. Demand supply curve to business is the best way to extract the most value from every person. The problem is it's too expensive. It's much time. But it's the best business model to get the most money out of every transaction. It's beautiful. If you have only one of this, how do you do it? You auction it. Who, who wants to pay this? Ten dollars? Anybody pay more than ten dollars? Eleven, twelve? And we auction it. Different business model. In a, shoe, in a, in a, in a mall? O en un centro comercial, fixed price hay un fijo. Ten, ten dollars Diez right do you want it or not lo quiere o no. and then in Colombia I just learned this this is a fantastic business en model aprendí que I went for a haircut porque fui a, a big hair earlier on el pelo. <laughs> and I went in I got a haircut I gave them my credit card y le di mi and they said how many payments I'm like pagos? what Yo le dije, ¿Cómo así? no idea what that meant no how many payments idea de qué era eso, so I'm like um, what's the right answer <laughs> right? no sé a ver si no sé And I find out that in in Colombia the banks and the credit cards have a device that you can pay in small installments. One installment, two installments, three installments, or whatever. Which basically means that anything you want to buy, you can buy now. You can pay in smaller pieces over time. Right? So that's a business model of how do you make people buy something now and collect all the money as quickly as possible. Business model. Business model is very important. You can rent things, you can list things, you can subscription. You can Share things, you can trade things. Intercambiar cosas. Those who figure business models out make the most money. Tienen los mejores modelos de negocios. And most companies pay attention on making the offering, the product, but they don't spend time on saying how will we extract the most money from the market. No se preocupan cómo extraer la mayor cantidad en el mercado de la manera más rápida de más cantidad. Tres preguntas sencillas. Business models are incredibly powerful. Zipcar. Poderosos. Yes, we have Zipcar. ¿Saben quién es Zipcar? Zipcar is a car they rent cars. Cars, right? And they basically says we're going to rent cars by the hour. Por hora. That's all they changed. You can rent a car for the whole day or you can rent one hour. And when they did that, they opened the whole market of people who were using taxis. 
el mercado you want a taxi or rent a car? taxis porque ahora es taxi o alquilar carros. This model has been around for este many many years. Aquí muchos años. CD. Remember CD? El CD. 15 dollars. Recuerda un CD cuesta. How many songs dollars. did you like on it? ¿Cuántas canciones había en un CD? <laughs> Pretty bad bueno, deal, huh? 15 dollars to get two good songs you like and 10 bad songs. Y, le, y las right. otras no le gustaban. And what did iPhone, Apple do? ¿Qué hizo Apple? So one song at a time and the market opens up. You get more people to mercado, buy more things in short time. Compra, más cosas en menos tiempo. Hotels by the hour. Hoteles por hora. In the U.S. you can't get that usually. It's hotels by the day. Por lo general en los Estados Unidos se consigue. Hotels, hotels by the hour. What a great thing. Hoteles por hora. Which goes out of that. So all these different ideas emerge out of this thing. Business models. Que pueden surgir de esos modelos de negocios. And then finally, you got to make sure they can create a barrier to entry. How do you create a barrier to entry? It's very hard. But you got to think from the beginning. What are we going to do that others can copy us? And the way you stop people from copying you are one of three things. I'm just going to give you the answer. One is, can you lock your customer in? Unique access. Or the second one is, can you get very big very quickly so your cost of production goes way down? La otra es bajar los right. costos well, de producción. Is, unique ways to do something la tercera love you. hacer la manera de, cosas, de manera products. única para que la gente Patents, lo ame a uno, cosas chéveres, diferentes. You've got to think very hard how to do those things muy and that's the four questions. Cosas, and now on anybody who comes to you and says I have an idea, it's a fantastic, what trends is it based on? Le dice, ¿qué ¿Qué tendencia, sobre qué tendencia está sobre qué tendencia humana cómo recolectar el pago sure y cómo asegurar de que nadie lo puede copiar si esas cuatro ideas la, la, la cosa okay. va a tener más piernas para porque va a ser relevante en el futuro hay gente que está pensando cómo recolectar el pago ya sabes cómo se recolectar el pago y ya sabes cómo tienes características que te va a diferenciar So let's go down to the higher part of this thing. Entonces vamos a la parte de abajo. Okay. So when you want to try and drive an innovation strategy, entonces cuando no estás diseñando una estrategia de innovación, you have to make sure hay que asegurarse there's a case for change. De que If you want to do a breakthrough, no company is going to really make a big effort to do something big unless there's a case for change. Una revolución si case for change is Like what John F. Kennedy said in 1960, says the Russians are there, and they got satellites flying around the earth, and the first man who was in space is a Russian, and those Russians are going to make the world a terrible place, and he put fear in people. Un lugar right? terrible. Y, and then he put hope in people la, after that. He said, if we work in winning space, pero, 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 si, and we can do something in space, we'll get science, technology, and all this cool stuff. We might be able to. Be the better people, the lesser evil to rule the world. El menos mal que and that's how it was positioned. And he created a case for change. Y el creó in companies, el you have cases for changes happening all the time. En What's a case for change for a company? ¿Por qué se necesita el cambio en una empresa? ¿Cuál es el caso Why should a company change? ¿Por qué una empresa tiene que cambiar y no repetir las cosas que hizo ayer? Competition. La competencia es una razón de cambio. Competition is coming. The Russians. Viene la competencia, como los rusos. Right? What else is changing? ¿Qué más? Es una razón de cambio. Customers. Los clientes están cambiando. The market changes. New opportunities are opening. Markets. They change. Hay nuevas oportunidades. Ellos están cambiando. So we need to create a case for change. Entonces hay que crear una razón para cambiar. And if there's a case for change, si hay una razón para cambiar, that case for change basically says that something's going to happen. Dice que algo va a suceder y algo malo va a suceder si no cambia. And what is that bad thing? ¿Y qué es la cosa mala? In the business, en el en el our revenue is going to get less. Que nuestros ingresos van a bajar. Our profits are going to decline. Nuestra utilidad va a bajar. So you got to create the imagination of what will happen in the future. Hay que imaginarse qué va a pasar en el futuro. And if that's the case, si ese es el caso, the business is going to get worse. Las empresas. And what kind of investments are we willing to make today up front? Vamos a hacer hoy. Let me just show you. Case for change. If you do not have a case for change in your company, and the case for change is driven usually by a CEO, by the competition, by changing customer needs, this thing is going to impact your financials. Your revenue will start going down. If you don't fix it, if it will go down. If you try and fix it, it might be this, but you'll have to do something extraordinary to stay the best. Or if you don't have to do something extraordinary to stay the best. Do you think Apple has a has a has a case for change today? Apple has a reason for change today. Apple is in trouble. Apple has many problems. Samsung has a case for change. Sam Samsung has a reason for change. Yes. Eventually, Samsung will be in trouble. 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 Eventually, Samsung es un gran número. In three years from now, en tres años, everybody is expecting us to make this much money. Todos esperamos que tengamos todo este dinero. And this is what we are really going to make. Todo este es el dinero que vamos a. The gap is big. 
a tener esta es la brecha you ask the next question. entonces uno tiene que hacer la siguiente pregunta ¿cuánto estamos dispuestos a invertir to close the gap. para cerrar la brecha? If this is one billion dollars, si esto representa how much money should we invest? ¿cuánto dinero deberíamos invertir? ¿cien dólares? ¿cien dólares? ¿mil dólares? A million dollars if the gap is big. Si la brecha es grande. Does that make sense, you guys? Eso tiene sentido. There's a problem in the future. Va a haber un problema. How big is the problem? If the problem is very big, then you'll have to invest quite a bit on the side. The problem is not so big. El problema no es tan grande. Hay que invertir menos. The biggest challenge for all companies they don't do this. In the, in the intuition, they know there's a problem in the future. They'll say I want innovation, but they don't quantify it. When they quantify it, it becomes very clear what you have to do. We were at Samex in Mexico. The company was growing at 30% revenue. And some brown the CEO says I want to innovate the company. So we went around the company and said, guys, let's start innovating. And this is why should we innovate when we're growing so much? There's no reason. And we said, San Bruno, you'll tell your company there's going to be a problem in the future. Sabe que va a haber un problema. Because right now nobody is feeling any urgency. Porque y lo que pasa es que hoy no hay nadie que esté en la urgencia. Entonces es una razón de cambio. Hay que crear la razón de cambio. This is an example of Carlos Gostin. He basically said, Gostin que dijo, "We make cars at Renault, and we are polluting the world. Y estamos contaminando el mundo. And one day we're going to get into a lot of trouble. Y un día nos vamos a meter un gran we don't want problema. to be known as a company no which pollutes. Que nos como and la we want to be the first company which stops Queremos polluting la and still deal with transportation. Y sin embargo, so he basically set the standard. Entonces, and he says we're going to make zero emission cars. Vamos a hacer carros que tienen cero he set the standard. They still make regular cars. Todavía siguen haciendo carros he says we're going to move to something bigger, or big cars a mover hacia los carros más distintos cero emisiones and this is the big vision where do we want to go in the future he says I want to go to zero emission cars y si yo quiero tener carros once he did that una vez hizo eso he then basically says just the car industry zero emission cars is where we want to go to this is where we normally are in our company this is where we want to move to aquí es donde estamos we could have chosen to make small cars, nano cars. We could have chosen to make fuel cell cars. Uh -huh. We're choosing this space. Why? Because we're the best at it. Porque somos los mejores en esta área. Then he does the next thing. He says, "What do the cars look like?" ¿Cómo van a ser los carros? He hasn't made any of these cars, guys. No ha hecho ninguno de estos carros. Los carros no se han hecho. Ya se está imaginando cómo va a ser el futuro. Imagining where this company is going to look like in the future. ¿Cómo va a ser la empresa del futuro? We are going to be the world leaders in electric cars. Electric cars should look something like this, like this. And they're sketching them, drawing them, prototyping them. Y lo están dibujando, haciendo prototipos. And then they say, in order to make these cars of the future, para hacer estos carros del futuro, what partners do we need? ¿Qué socios necesitamos? Why do you need partners, guys? ¿Por qué vamos a necesitar socios? ¿Para qué? Because you're trying to do something you've never done before. Porque ustedes van a hacer algo que nunca han hecho. Think of it like this. Piensa en lo así. If it's something that you do know how to do, then you would never look for partners. But if it's something you know how to do, you should do it yesterday. Make sense? Pero si sí lo saben hacer, lo deben haber hecho ayer. You should have just done that. Háganlo. This is a hard thing, big things to do to change the big, big picture. Esto lo. So he says, in order to do this, we'll have to be. Entonces dijo, bueno, para lograr hacer esto, nos tenemos que asociar con. Partner with Nissan, charging technologies, charging stations, and he creates a network of partners around the big new place he wants to. Una red de socios hacia el futuro que quiere llegar. In order to do your strategy for innovation, here's what you have to do. Para poder tener una estrategia de innovación, eso es lo que hay que hacer. You need to agree on the definition. Tienes que tener una definición. You need to create the case for change. Tienes que generar una razón de cambio. Quantify it into a growth gap. Tienes que cuantificarlo en términos de brecha. Whatever the gap is, de crecimiento. Agree on how much money you're willing to spend. Dependiendo de la brecha, close the gap. Determinas cuánto invertir para cerrar la brecha. Identify your next field of play where you want to focus on. En dónde quieres, a dónde quieres llegar, en qué campo. And wherever you focus on, think of the partners, the concepts that will go into that field. Up to now, this is still blah 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 innovation. Palabras, palabras, innovación, no? All right, I want to be very clear. This is about imagining where we want to go. Es imaginar. But what we're doing is getting agreement and alignment. Quiere llegar, pero tiene que alinear. Of what our future place is going to be. Tiene que alinearse. Consenso de cómo va a ser el futuro. This is what Pepsi did with Invernuvi. Invernuvi was saying, we sell beverages with sugar, which makes people fat. Somebody's going to sue us. We're going to become the next tobacco. And so, work with her, and then we identify places for them to move into, and we went into things like making snacks, food, and in the end, we moved to healthy beverages. Nobody believed Pepsi could be healthy, so we moved the word healthy to healthier, healthier beverages. We made Pepsi, diet Pepsi. We made orange juices, teas, and other things, and that's the concepts. 
the new field of play, case el for change, juego, somebody's going to sue us cambio, because we make sugar mandar, beverages. There's a big issue in our business. We need to move to a new area, carbonated beverages. We move to a new area called healthier beverages. On the healthier beverages, we can imagine diet Pepsi, orange juice, coco, uh, 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 teas and other things. We'll find partners to do that and we'll then launch them very quickly out, out to the market. Okay? And then you got to do it. Y luego hay que then you got to do it. Luego hay que and to do it, here's what's happening hacerlo, more and more, esto es lo que está is you need a structure es que for making innovation real. Para hacer que Many of you guys are already chief innovation officers. Ya son muchos the problem with most companies is they'll assign the role of the chief innovation officer to a guy in strategy, or a guy in finance, or a guy in marketing, or a guy in R&D. The trouble is those profiles are not the best profiles to do innovation. Remember what I said about innovation being across the company? Dije que la innovación tiene que ocurrir en toda la empresa. So if you are a strategy guy, you'll be so pulled si very much to strategic planning. Entonces vas a hacer un plan if you're the finance guy, you're going to look si for ROIs and profits at the end of the year. If you're the marketing guy, si you get pulled into customer insights pensar más en el, and usually customer complaints. Y las quejas de and if you're the R&D guy, si eres de you can do anything, but you don't know when it's going to be done. Pero no sabes lo vas a poder right? hacer. What we need is somebody who can pull these guys together and make them think about the future, what's the next space we're going to innovate on. We don't talk about ROI and IRR. We talk about options. We don't talk about um, basically customer complaints. We talk about insights. And we talk about R&D from the technology and other things. And that person is pulled together. That person used to be the CEO Esa persona antes era el presidente. because he had access to everybody. El que tenía acceso Now, a todos. just like the Office of Quality, Hoy, the Office of Technology, el de the Office of Innovation is emerging. El departamento de innovación. But this person has to be very good by connecting to the different areas. Muy buena para but the most important thing he needs is that connection with the CEO. Es tener con el so if you are a chief innovation si officer si and you're not innovación. meeting with your CEO y once a week or once a month sharing with him or her what's going on, you're probably going to get relegated to somebody on top of you and somebody below you. Next second, the power of your projects is going to get less and less. The money for your projects is going to be less and less and they're going to become more. You have to keep it up to the CEO. That person needs to be able to get coffee to the CEO. Tomar café that person needs to meet regularly with a senior person who with this. If you're a CEO here, that's his role. You need to talk to this guy. If you're not, find a way to access the chief innovation officer. Okay. The next one which we find is really an issue for you guys is this. Eurekas are very easy to do. You saw the pipeline where the, uh, Scott talked about a funnel. Ya hablamos del, del the funnel is where the Eureka is generated usually, but this is where you execute it. Pero aquí es donde se the big problem with big ideas is you start big. Es que uno it's a big. It's a big idea. But when you start executing it, the idea starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. And smaller. Because you de-risk it. Uno le quita and so when you finally execute it, it doesn't give you the power of what you imagined when you started. No tiene el gran poder so the ways you do this are different no, entonces, on how you execute these things. You've got to do a lot more experimentation, hay que hacer mucho más a lot more iteration. And so be careful of really plugging it into a PMO system, de, an existing process for product development. This is slightly different. It was what Porque Scott said. You might have two or three stages Scott. only. It's a different Puede stage gate. Haya un de dos o tres those gates are different. Pero es pero, pero eso es and you've got to manage those very differently, especially on these two pieces where this is the hardest part of the innovation. innovation. This is blah, blah, blah. Es pues puras palabras, blah this blah, is where you actually do the work. You have to experiment. So I want to make sure what you guys understand in here is experiment means to make mistakes. Most projects that you run, you're not allowed to make any mistakes. There's a start and a finish date, and you go all the way through and you're done. And here, you need to make three or four cycles of making mistakes. Because every time you make a mistake, you learn. How many of you guys learn to ride a bicycle by reading a book? You have to get on the bicycle, fall off. You have to get on the bicycle, fall off. On the bicycle, fall off. In innovation, you have to make lots of mistakes to find out what the right thing is. It's called experimentation. And then you go to correct. 
Sí. Hay que hacerlo. So let me just leave this thing over here. I see I, Carlos is standing up over there telling me I need to go. Ya me dice que se me acaba um, el tiempo. One last message on teams. Un último mensaje acerca de los We equipos. We heard the message on cross-functional teams. Ya oímos sobre los equipos. Cross-functional teams are very important for innovation. But today, in Korea, in Korea we got a word called pali pali. Pero tenemos una palabra que Korea they do innovation fast fast. Pali pali means fast fast. Pali pali es rápido rápido. And you need to go fast. Y hay que ir rápido. And the way you go fast is the rápido, person on your team has a great network. If somebody asks me right now, hey, si me pregunta, what ahora, is oiga, the problems on batteries los, on Boeing? The, the batteries which are catching fire. Que I should be able to pick up my Boeing cell phone con las pilas, on LinkedIn, send con an email baterías. to 20 of my friends, and the answer should come back within 5 to 10 minutes. Obtener una respuesta I don't need to go minutos. study it. No tengo que ir I should not go to a conference for it. No tengo que ir a una conferencia. That's wrong. It takes too long. Eso toma demasiado tiempo. The information should come to you now. So build teams ahora. with people who have got great networks. Con personas que tengan grandes redes. If you want to go, if you need an MBA in your company, si no, don't go get the MBA. Go hire him faster. Si no necesita un MBA, va y contrate una vez. Does that make sense? Vez. No vaya usted Speed is very important MBA. for you to get this things done. Speed es muy importante. And then I'm going to wrap this thing up for you Yo guys to get innovation real. La charla sobre cómo hacer que la innovación sea innovation is hard whatever you're going to do is not going to be easy you've got a partner Todo lo que van a hacer tiene, partner a allows you to get confidence socios, into your company te traen the Koreans are the most amazing Korean in the world la gente más increíble del mundo. if you run into them si uno se they don't speak very good English coreano, no hablan mucho inglés, they don't look like they like you no, because they're very quiet que, and they're very shy son but later on you find out they're really great people pero so that's not the issue of the people but they don't talk a lot pero no hablan mucho. but this guy's created partnerships in the 70s, 80s and 90s with all these great companies to get knowledge from those companies to be able to become the world leaders in cell phones, leaders in world leaders in computers, en world leaders in printers, en world leaders in cars, en world leaders in everything, en todos en through partnering. Es, you guys want to get a shortcut to getting things done? Una Think partnering. Asociense. It's a very fast way to get es things done. Okay, okay, so with that, that I'm going to just stop here. Pues Carlos, is that good? Parar. And, and then basically tell you guys innovation is hard you need a strategy you need to know how to do, do it and lastly you'll need discipline to make that happen uh, we'll give the slides distribute them if you want them okay. thank you very much thank you very much iniciamos con 30 minutos de preguntas Francisco Uh, I, I would like to talk uh, uh, or ask you about trends. Me gustaría preguntarte acerca de las tendencias. Uh, I remember when the quality movement Recuerdo cuando el movimiento de la calidad empezó en los ochentas. Cuando América descubrió lo que estaba pasando en Japón. Mr. Deming, y el señor Deming. Y luego todos quality. empezaron a hablar sobre uh -huh. la calidad. Today, quality is not Hoy la calidad. The end no es el fin es el punto de partida para cualquier cosa uh, me pregunto qué pasaría con la innovación qué pasará con la innovación y qué tendencias van a cambiar y cuál será el futuro porque una de las cosas que nos preocupa a un país como Colombia es que estamos muy lejos de otros países y lo que yo he visto viajando alrededor del mundo es que para tener la mentalidad adecuada para un país como este toma mucho tiempo y ya mencionaste algunos de los factores el primero siendo la cultura no se puede cambiar la cultura de un día a otro como esto toma mucho tiempo Estamos haciendo un trabajo y cuando se hablamos, eh, estamos hablando de otra cosa. Y no nos estamos enfocando en lo que tenemos que estar haciendo. Y de repente nos enfrentamos a otras, a otros retos. Una de las cosas que vemos en innovación es cuando vas a una compañía, te excitas por eso. Nosotros vemos esto mucho. Cuando vas a una compañía, cuando vas a una compañía, vas a una compañía dos o tres años después, y vas a ver que la innovación se convierte en una de las iniciativas 
de innovación se han vuelto iniciativas de Six Sigma y bueno, and, and that happens a lot because one of the things about innovation is you don't get the pressure. You don't get the pressure of doing something different. Si no hay presión para hacer algo distinto, pues la gente se relaja. So at the high level, there's something about a discipline of keeping the pressure. So we want to be better. We want to be setting high targets and always wanting to go for it. Los objetivos altos. Just as an example, if you fold your arms, just go ahead and fold your arms, everybody. El ejemplo, bueno, ahora crucemos todos los brazos. See how that feels. It feels pretty good right now. Because you're used to it. Now fold it the other way. Ahora crucenlos de la otra manera. Unfold and fold it the other way. Crucenlos. How does that feel? ¿Cómo se siente eso? It, it's just clumsy and messy, right? No, no, stay that way. Don't change. This is clumsy. And I, I'm going to come to you from now on every day and ask you to do this. And then one day I forget to ask you to do this. Now, what do you do? You go back to the old way. So this, this thing about keeping the pressure is the biggest issue in companies in keeping innovation as an initiative going. Because people relax back to the easy. This is easy. Porque la gente vuelve a lo fácil. So the other one is a little hard. It's different. La otra es más difícil porque so you need to keep the pressure on that. Hay que mantener la presión. I, I think your culture is not the problem. I want to be very no clear to all of you guys. Que, que People complain about the culture. La gente se queja de su cultura you colombiana, pero es lo que tiene. You can't change it. You go no into a company. Um, when, when Samex came to us and Cuando said, can you change our, com our, our culture? Si we said, Sam Brown, Brown no, there's only one way we can help you do that. You'll have to fire one-third of the people. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train one-third of the people to become better. You'll have to train you need the support of HR, the support of many things to make it happen, it's going to be a long journey. Good luck. Buena suerte. Don't get so don't get sucked into that one. Entonces, no My suggestion is, at any moment, companies around the world are innovating. Your companies are innovating. Del mundo, están and and find cuenta. those people who are innovating. And find how they navigate the company. They figured it out. There's somebody in your, sabe your sabe company always who's always able to get funding for his ideas. He gets support for what he wants to do. And we call that the unwritten rule. There's a rule on how to do it correctly. And then there's the unwritten rule by which how things get done. Y así es como las Take the unwritten rules of how things get done and make them the official. Miren estas maneras, reglas no escritas. Use your culture, don't fight against the river. No Swim with the culture, you go faster. Engineering companies, most engineering companies look a lot like many of the companies I see in Latin America. Son como muchas empresas engineering companies are hierarchical. Engineering companies are basically if the boss says do this, you do it. There's not so much consensus driven work. But they're all over the U.S. I'll be very clear. Many American companies are, 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 are those type of companies. The other companies over here where you see they're very consensus driven. But okay, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Trabajan en equipos. And those exist too. So I don't think the culture is really the issue. Use the culture. Understand the best of the culture. And use it. And don't complain about the worst of it. No se queje de lo, de lo malo de la Every culture innovated. Colombia ya, didn't become what it is today. Ahora. Colombia no se volvió lo que es hoy. Sin innovación. Es una empresa exitosa. Successful people. Una ciudad exitosa. Successful companies. Exitosa, you have that. Exitos. It's, it's happened. It will happen sucedió, again. People are happening as long as you expect greatness. As long as you don't aim for the mediocre. Mientras que aim no high. le apuntes a lo mediocre está bien. Aim high, even if you meet halfway, it's pretty good. Si llegas good. a la mitad de eso va a ser suficiente bueno, pero si empiezas por lo bajo, you'll get not so much. No vas a llegar a ningún lado. So that's that's what I see. The other part of this thing, just keep in mind, guys, is the world got flat. Que el mundo se aplanó. What does that mean? ¿Qué significa que el mundo se aplanó? Today you don't have to go to MIT. Significa que hoy no hay que ir a MIT. The courses of MIT are available online at Coursera or EDX. You can study it right now. EDX y los pueden meter a un curso ya. You can get the guy who works. At Apple, the Apple design, Apple marketing, pay him enough money, he'll move over here. People are moving very easily. China does it all the time. China lo hace todo el tiempo. So you can hire people, the consultants everywhere, sharing as much knowledge as they can. Consultores que quieren compartir el conocimiento. China is doing it. Korea did it. China lo hizo. Korea lo hizo. ¿Por qué no lo pueden hacer ustedes también? Okay. Is that how? Did I answer your question? No, I didn't answer your question. Did you ask or no? seen all, all over the place around the world. Innovation is the center of the convers strategic conversation for governments, for organizations, and communities. 
de las conversaciones en gobiernos y comunidades empresas. Y eso es, digo que, si vas a 1990 y miras todos los reportes anuales de los americanos, la innovación siempre ha estado en la innovación. La gente decía que la innovación siempre ha estado en la innovación. Es solo que la gente la utiliza demasiado y no entiende bien qué significa. La palabra innovación perdió su significado. En ese entonces tenía que ver con el crecimiento y tenía que ver con impulsar el crecimiento porque todo lo que se crea creaba valor, todo lo que uno compraba era el intercambio de estado de balances. Knowledge economy is this Porter talks about it. Many other people have talked about Mucha it. It has to keep on going. It's been happening. This is not a new phenomenon. No innovation has been around. La innovación lleva aquí. It's just if you're beginning to put energy around this thing, everybody should innovate. Estamos poniéndole más energía decir que todos tienen que innovar. Be careful about that also. I don't think everybody needs to innovate. No creo que todos tienen que innovar. I don't think everybody can innovate. No creo que in the U.S. one company like Apple comes out. Behind Apple becomes a lot of rich people. Then they spend money and they buy other things like Tesla, which probably should not be a successful company. Become successful because this guy's all billionaires. Porque todos hay billonarios y pueden comprar sus carros Tesla. So, in the U.S., ten companies made Chicago. Ten companies made, let's say, Silicon Valley. And those ten companies created thousands of jobs, thousands of jobs behind that. Empleos y miles de empleos detrás de ellos. Stay focused on your winners. Don't focus on your everybody. Too many people are throwing too many seeds out there, hoping that they'll all flower and one of them will become a tree. Find the winners, support the winners. Encuentren los ganadores y apoyen a los ganadores. I, I have a question. I, I am Sandra Hurtado, R&D manager of uh, Levapan. Yo soy Sandra Hurtado. I, I would like to know uh, what would you recommend for startups ¿Qué recomendaría and para empresas nuevas y emprendedores? Is, oh, those models seems to work in a Porque big este company, modelo parece que funciona en las empresas ones, grandes, pero las en pequeñas. What would you recommend? ¿Qué recomendarías? So in a small or any place, I'm going to say for both places. Voy a one of the biggest mistakes that we have done as business school professors or, or chief universitarios or the, the finance guys and the strategy guys is they demand the business plan. Es que demás, Show me the business plan. Un plan de Now Muestra the business plan, plan is the worst thing you can really do. Ask any entrepreneur, did they actually do a business plan? Did Mark Zuckerberg make a business plan? Si Mark Zuckerberg hizo un plan he de sat in his room and he programmed. Right. Did Bill Gates do a business plan? Did Steve Jobs do a business plan? None of them did any of the business plans. So I'll share a story with you. My father uh, in Zambia wanted to become an entrepreneur. So he says, I want to make a factory, clothing factory. So what does he do? Business plan? Plan de negocios? No. He goes into the stores and he buys different clothes from the stores. And he buys a whole bunch of clothes and then he cuts the label off of all the things he bought. So you cannot see the brand or the markers of that. Then he goes back to the same stores and says, which of this would you buy? And they say, oh, I like this, or I like this, I like this. And very quickly he comes to a conclusion that in Zambia school uniforms are not being supplied. They're looking for school uniforms for kids. So then he says, okay. So then he buys a whole bunch of school uniforms and he says, these are samples and he puts a mark on it for his name y le pone una marca que hotel and company como si fuera su and he said how many of this will you buy y le and he goes to all the different stores and gets all of them si las right and then he says okay people want to buy this thing this is great Uy, bueno, so then he says how do I manufacture it y ahora so he goes to the place where people are making some clothes and he says can you make this for me le dice, can you make this for me and he's asking many different people y le pide a and one of them says at night you can use the machines dice, sí, mire, por la noche and you can pay rent for it but you can use the machines at night you don't have to buy the machines wow So then he says, now I'll write my business plan. The market I'm going to go for is students, school uniforms. I'll sell it through these stores. This is the price for it. I will manufacture it in this way. The cost of manufacturing is this. I need this much money to make it happen. And in some partners to invest into, I need one sales guy, one marketing guy. Does that make sense? Do. Don't talk. No hablen. Get out of the conference room. Sal, sal, go talk to the people. Entonces, and the same for innovation in the company and outside the company. Get out of the conference room. De la sala de Start rolling up the sleeves. And every time Suban you do something, you'll make a mistake. Algo, and you will error, learn sí. you what not to do. Que no hacer. Because on the PowerPoint, you learn nothing. PowerPoint no se nada. Nothing. That PowerPoint's terrible. PowerPoint Those business plans are terrible. terrible. You need them to convince other people to join you. You don't need them. You know what you want to do. Does that make sense? Tiene sentido. Okay. So the expression is, don't put the horse behind the cart. The business plan goes behind. El plan de negocios va detrás. Do. Experience. Experiment. Haga va por delante. Experimente. Preguntas. 
Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Antonio Rivaneira. I work uh, in a technology Antonio. company. Watching your Korean example, I saw that IBM is a partner, a Samsung partner. I want to ask for your opinion about uh, how IBM can do it, uh, can do uh, yearly just uh, 6,000 uh, patents, and how can they make innovation? So um, it's, one is, there's a partnership with Samsung and IBM. So IBM is very clever in understanding when to partner, when not to partner. So you see Samsung as a distributor of its IP. And you can collect money from it by, through a product or through licensing. It doesn't matter how it makes money from it. Samsung is very clever and says, I don't have that knowledge. And I need to somehow get that knowledge from IBM. So it makes a partnership on that. So both people are winning. It's a, it's a win-win. The trouble sometimes is, is one side eventually wins and one loses. And that's when we don't get happy about it. But the, the, and that's hard to manage. Right? So IBM had 6,000 patents. Today those patents are available to all of us. I don't know if you know that. You can use them if you want to. And if you do make money from it, you've got to give them a, a licensing fee. So they have a business model also on everything they've created. They know they cannot commercialize. So sometimes it's better for you to take your knowledge and give it to somebody else so they can make money from it and give you some money back instead of keeping everything inside. Those are choices. But the Koreans, I want to just make sure you guys understand. I, I was in Korea at LG and I helped them build the, um, the flat panel display factories which are like big football soccer fields um, they, have, they they basically say here's what we want to do here's what we need to know how to do here's what we don't know and who are the partners and then they quickly go get the partners to get things done a lot of people are entrepreneurs a lot of people are innovators they think they have to do everything themselves and when you do that that takes too much time and you'll never get there because today the world is pali pali go fast fast because if you don't go fast your competitor is and you'll, you will not get out to the market quickly enough. Right? So partnering is not a bad way to do it, but sometimes if you don't understand the cultures and the rules, you feel one will steal from you. Unfortunately, if, if you don't partner, you'll lose. If you partner, you might lose. You better partner. It's not a bad choice. Right? Hi, my name is David. I am in, in the software industry. I have a question about uh, facing competition with big companies. You know, um, app, apps industry is exploding everywhere. But how to face this uh, big companies like Google uh, innovating all, all the time and you are just uh, in a startup? And you have a good idea and you want to pull it and you struggle financially and in many other ways. Uh, and finally, you have something working and then you, know, you realize that Google has it already. So how do you face that? Right. So a couple, couple of things. I think there's a bigger question being asked here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, right? Who, who's the boss in entrepreneur? You are the boss, right? In a company, when somebody gives, says, here's the idea, do it, who's the boss? You have a boss, right? You got somebody who's, that's one big problem right there, right? How do you make your team as an entrepreneur? You find them. You choose them. How do you make a team in a company? You're given a team. And sometimes it's a bad team. Right? The third thing over here is who makes decisions quickly? Entrepreneurs or the big company? The entrepreneur makes a decision very quickly. The other guy has to ask people for decisions. Who's got lots of resources? The big company. You are starving. No. But when you're starving, what do you do? Pero no dinero, ¿qué haces? You're more creative and more likely to partner. You're looking for other people to help you get bigger, faster, and all that. 
Right. So when you look at the pros and cons, the entrepreneur is more nimble, is faster, quicker, more likely to partner. At Google, it's one project of probably 30, 40 in the portfolio. And you don't have the best people working on all the projects. And when it comes out of the market, it still competes with the other 10 ideas they have. So Google may still bring it out. It'll still die most of the time. But you have focus. You care about it. So entrepreneurs are the ones who have an ability to take what we will say, oh, Google already did it, but they made no money from it. You've heard that story a thousand times. Oh, IBM had that idea and they did nothing with it. Xerox had, uh, they didn't do anything with it. It's not that these guys were stupid. They were doing a lot of other things also. They had to choose. Stay the path, perhaps, and they'll quit. Or call them up and join with them. Partner. But, okay. Okay, you can do that. It's, it's very hard for a small, co a big company Gracias. to move very quickly. It's very hard. Jose Fernando Escobar, okay. Fundación Science International. En la fundación consideramos que un complemento importante para la innovación es la propiedad intelectual. Uh, his name is Jose Fernando Escobar. Uh, he works at Fundación Science International. Fundación Science International. Foundation, sorry. En la fundación creemos que la propiedad intelectual es un buen complemento de protección de la innovación. The intellectual property is a key factor in innovation. En tu modelo no encontré o no una expresión con respecto a ese respaldo que la propiedad intelectual puede dar, no solo nacional, sino internacionalmente, a la innovación. Quería preguntarle tu consideración al respecto y complementando la pregunta anterior, donde se hablaba, por ejemplo, de IBM, que se ha dedicado a hacer patentes para fomentar su proyección internacional. Ok, I'm going to give you a good... I'm going to try to simplify. In your model, he didn't see uh, intellectual propriety part as an element. So, he understand companies as IBM, they are doing business using patents. So, he's wondering... Uh, how you can leverage that. Sure. So, so I did tell you guys that whatever your idea is, make sure there's a barrier to entry. Make sure people can't copy you. So I said that. I also didn't pay attention as much to patents. And that was deliberate. I'll tell you why. We made the cell phone at Motorola. It didn't take more than one year before Nokia copied it. Ericsson copied it. People were able to make things if they really want to. Patents are, are ways to keep barriers from people to copy you, but what, what we have found is people find a way to do the same thing. They find a different way to do it, but they do it. That's one thing. The other reason you patent is you want to say, I have the right to play. I have the right to do something. Right? So you've got to be careful about patents as the stick for winning. I would prefer you having your customers locked in. I fly American Airlines for the last 15 years. I hate that company. But I got miles. Those miles lock me in. No patents. No patents. That program is better and stickier to keep the customers together forever. Right? It's a different thing than that. You look at the cement companies. Why do you think there's the same cement companies in every country and they've been around for 50, 80 years? Because big investments. Big investments are barriers to entry. So there are other ways to create barriers to entry besides patents. Now, having said that, if you can patent, do it. But don't assume that's going to allow you to win. When we were at Motorola, Nokia would come to us and say, you can't do that. And we would take our big pile of patents and say, we can do that, look. And we give them a patent to look at. So their lawyers would look, look through it and send a letter and say, that patent was, it was about water. Oh, sorry. Here's another one. Oh, another one. And another one. And we basically negotiate until we got tired. Patents were used as negotiating tools for partnerships and licensing. So, I'm, I'm not saying don't patent. I patent it. I believe in patenting. But don't believe patenting will win the game. But today we are seeing some of that happen with Google buying Motorola. We're seeing um, Microsoft buying Nokia. And right now, RIMS patents will be bought by somebody. Somebody wants those patents to be able to make cell phones. Right? It's, a, it's, not, it's a different sort of fight which is going on out there. Patents are important. But not the determinant for winning. I found that people who just do and build a business from it eventually get patents around it at the right time 
Pero no empiezas con patentes, sino patentes, 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 Bueno, eh, vamos a cerrar. Eh, antes de cerrar, eh, un agradecimiento y una nota. Ah, Francisco. ¿Quieres otra pregunta? ¿Falta alguien? Ok. I love what you just said because that's a, a change in paradigm sí, eso, with regard to the paradigma view that they have about patents at the university level. Las ideas que tenemos sobre las This patentes en el universitario. Eso es una conversación so completamente distinta. Entonces mi pregunta you, es: since you come from a university, desde que vienes, tú vienes del ambiente académico, eres una profesora. This kind of conversation, how is uh, accepted? ¿Cómo es muy es bien aceptada este tipo de conversación en las universidades? Um, Look, if you're in science and technology, Mira, si people want to patent, and, and, and they will patent to do the things, and they should. But what we are finding, if you look at the top 20 companies which, went, which grew very quickly, they were not founded on patents, they were founded on developing some product, some, some customer, and then they build a business out of it. The university must build science, must build technology, Pensar que uno tiene and maybe if you're close to business school you may be able to partner or take what they're thinking into a commercial product patenting by itself Pero los um, sí mismos. is is a good activity like like you can measure how many patents did Motorola do every year 500 we were very proud of that but we didn't care about the patents as much what we cared about was what we were thinking about what's next the patent was just an indicator to stretch us into the future but it wasn't really to say we will have an exclusivity on something we knew every time we made something if the other company was big and strong and they had lawyers they would just copy and then they would negotiate by some con otra técnica. So patents can give you confidence, pueden dar confianza. But they are not necessarily the, Pero no necesariamente the fastest way to commercialization. No, I'm talking about hacer commercialization. Hacer Yo estoy hablando de comercialización. Okay. And it sounds like a strong position. Yeah, I, I came from a company which patented all that. Sí, yo vengo de una empresa que hizo muchas patentes, pero okay. bueno, okay. esa es mi posición hoy. Okay. Okay. Vamos, vamos a cerrar. Les le había dicho un agradecimiento, una reflexión y ahora una invitación. El agradecimiento especial para María Carolina Suárez, directora ejecutiva de la Asociación de Fundaciones de Empresas. Y viene la reflexión, y es alrededor de conectar puntos. Francisco nos habló del tema de calidad. Eh, ayer el doctor Patel eh, solicitó una camisa de Falcao. Y le pregunté, ¿camisa de Falcao y para quién? Y yo, ¿Para mí? ¿Para ti? ¿Para quién? Y yo, digo, no, para mi niño. Y la reflexión es, en el país hemos trabajado muy fuerte el liderazgo de muchas de las personas que están acá para poder llevar la innovación y hacerla real. Hoy en día nos golearon los chilenos, nos metieron tres, pero le sacamos otros tres y pasamos, y pasamos de primeros y estamos de cabeza. Esto gracias a procesos como se hicieron el pasado de reconocer con humildad que hay gente buena que quiere contribuir y conectarse. Y esos procesos de facilitación eh, llegaron de afuera en el caso de la selección y fue el técnico de, de Colombia, Peckerman, que armó de adentro un gran equipo y lo logró volver cohesivo. La invitación para el doctor Patel y, y Scott es que nos ayuden como los Peckermans para poder contribuir en esta Colombia que quiere mejorar y quiere apostar la innovación para transformarnos como país. Y para nosotros ha sido un placer contar con ustedes el día de hoy y con ustedes por darnos ese tiempo y brindarnos ese espacio para poder generar sentido y seguir dando un paso adelante. Y la, esa es parte de la invitación y la reflexión, pero antes de que se vayan, el doctor Patel eh, quiere compartirles dos libros, los va a rifar, las personas que entregaron sus tarjetas, por favor. ¿Dónde está Carlos Tamayo? Que no se haya ido. Muy bien, Carlos. Ven acá, por favor. Listo. Lilian Ramírez. Muy bien, Lilian.
Muchas gracias a todos. Aquí falta, ah, falta uno más. Joari <risa> Puentes. Okay, muchas, muchas gracias a todos por su tiempo.